Joining us now from Portland, Oregon, is attorney Bruce McCain. He's a former captain in the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office. He retired just last year. Good to have you with us this morning. Well, thank you, Erica, for having me. There are new reports out that Terry Horman told her stepson Kyron's teachers on the morning he disappeared that he had a doctor's appointment later that day. She claims she said she alerted them to the appointment, which was going to happen the following Friday. I, I know you look at that information and you say there's something that doesn't work here. Well, yeah, it's actually quite significant because this was actually the last day of school. So a, a doctor's appointment the following Friday would have been pretty irrelevant to the school. But the critical thing about this June 4th doctor's appointment is that that put the school in the position of not being concerned at all that Kyron was not in his class, wasn't at lunch, and wasn't on the bus that afternoon. So it looks like, at least this point, Terry was able to bring Kyron to school, establish his presence there, and then perhaps take him away. At least that's the, that's the theory they're working on without the school picking up the phone and calling Kane at work, for example. So, and we should point out again, she, she is not a suspect at this point. But as you're putting that together, you spent many years, obviously, with the sheriff's department. Department. Does that tell you that there could be some sort of, of premeditated plan here? Well, obviously, that looks like it very much would be a planned issue, especially with the deceptive answers she gave later about, gee, I think I meant June 11th, which would have been long after the school was already out. So the key right now is going back and focusing and reconstructing every hour and minute that she spent on that fateful June 4th to find out exactly where the holes are in her original story. And part of that timeline is, is a three-hour block of time where we're not really sure what was happening between the time she dropped Kyron off the last time she saw him at school and when she showed up at the gym. There's also a 90 minute window that a friend of hers, Dee Dee Spicer, around that same time is being questioned about. What do you make of those gaps? Well, again, those are very significant, especially given the close relationship between Dee Dee and Terry. And once again, the investigators right now seem to be putting pressure on Terry's closest friends, associates, and family to basically tell them it's time to get on the right side of this issue. And Dee Dee right now seems to be on Terry's side, and we'll see how long that lasts. But that critical 90 minutes for both of them is where they seem to be focusing their efforts on the June 4th day. And speaking of Dee Dee, her home has been searched. Kyron's mother and father say she's hampering the investigation. Uh, the, the Sheriff's Department, though, did recently come out and answer some questions from journalists via email. They've been quiet for a little while. One of them that really stuck out was a question about whether or not they have any information to believe Kyron is alive. They didn't answer it directly. Yeah, I think that actually is very significant, partly because of this email questions. Again, this has been a very, very strange and frustrating public relations piece from my former employer. But what we have is they took three days to carefully parse those answers. And you're absolutely right, Eric, is that the question was, do you have any information to believe he's alive? And they could not bring themselves to say yes. The best they could do is we continue to hope. And frankly, that puts the sheriff's office in the same position as thousands of Oregonians and others around the country that are looking for Kyron. Based on your your experience, the number of years you spent there with the department, what do you think may have happened? Well, the bottom line is Kyron is either alive or dead, and that, that's the blunt truth right now. Uh, so right now, the, the key is to try to put pressure on Terry, and perhaps through a, an arrest on an unrelated criminal episode. This would be the murder for hire plot. And using that, they could potentially leverage the, the truth about Kyron out of him, mm -hmm. out, of, out of both of the people that were involved in this. But right now, Kyron is simply missing, and nobody, including investigators, seem to know what happened to him. Bruce McCain, appreciate your insight. Thanks for being with us this morning. Thank you, Erica.